Hi, welcome. Um, I'm at the Mountain Area Health Education Center here in Asheville, and I'm teaching uh, over the next few days. So I just snuck away from the class to come and talk to you, do a little live stream, because um, I'm trying to keep up with my Friday live streams wherever I am. And um, the, the topic today is our contralateral movements. Now, I, I posted a video on Monday, which I'm going to right now put this in the comments. I posted it on Monday, and it was a video about, um, hi, Diane. <laughs> it's a video about brain optimizing practices, like how certain practices are really good for your brain. And so the questions I got after I posted that video were, first of all, um, why are these kinds of contralateral movements good for your brain was the first question. And then the second question is how can I adapt them? Because even though, you know, the, the pose that I showed was just lying on your back, but there's lots of different ways to work with contralateral movements. So I'm sorry if it's a little noisy here. This is uh, the cafeteria, I know, they call it the, the dining area of the Mountain Area Health Education Center, and they're setting up for our lunch because we have a group of about 33 clinicians with us for these three days, and we're teaching them um, yoga practices that are particularly helpful for helping to heal the effects of, of trauma and, and substance use and addiction challenges. So that's where we're going to right now. Um, I probably I could sneak you down there to see the room and see everybody practicing, but I don't know um, if they would like being on camera on my live stream. <laughs> so I'll just I was just kind of trying to hide in the kitchen and and uh, hide out with you to talk to you here in the kitchen for a few minutes. Okay, so let's talk about this um, video which I posted. So in the video, I'm lying on my back and I'm moving my right arm and left leg and then left arm and right leg. And um, so the question is, why is that good for your brain? So the main reason is because when you move the opposite sides of your body, this is called cross crawl movements. It's like crawl, you know, it's one of the first things that babies learn to do, that kind of crawling movement. Um, what that does is it forces the hemispheres, which do different things, right? The right side is going to go up to your left hemisphere. Left side is going to go up to the right hemisphere. It forces them to coordinate their function. So that's one of the first things. And what this does is increases the great, the uh, white matter fibers, which cross over the hemispheres at a structure called the corpus callosum. It forces that, that area of the brain to develop more connectivity. So that's one of the reasons it's so great to use. Um, one of the things that they have discovered in depression with people with, with depression is, um, this this asymmetry meaning like there's a lack of connectivity the other thing that they've discovered is less activity in the front part of the left side of the brain and when they see more gray matter and more activity here that tends to correspond with better mood so just getting that connectivity going with this contralateral movement can be really helpful now how do you adapt it was the next question so how can we adapt that movement so one of the ways is you can do it simply sitting here in a chair you can't see my whole body but sitting here in a chair i could do my right arm up with my left foot with my left leg and then my left arm and the right, right leg, you can do that in the chair. And you don't have to lift up really high like I just did. You could also just do your wrist, your hand lifting up off your lap with your, op with your opposite foot doing movement. So that kind of opposite movement, nice slow, smooth opposite movement of hands and feet is useful for that connectivity across the corpus callosum, which helps with self-regulation. So you're going in more into that parasympathetic state. And also like it forces you to kind of think a little bit, like what am I doing? It's a little confusing. Um, that kind of activity is useful for a front brain. Okay, then you could, so you could do it in a chair, you could do it sit, sitting, you could do it standing up, you can do opposite arm and legs, and in fact, walking mindfully is exactly that, <laughs> right? So walking slowly and mindfully and noticing the movement is helpful for increasing proprioception, helpful for increasing connectivity uh, because it's a cross-crawl movement. Um, you, so you can do it sitting in a chair, you can do it standing up, you can do it lying on your back, you can do it front tabletop pose, so from all fours, opposite hands and legs, doing opposite things. Um, and uh, I'm probably missing, oh, and certainly prone, right? So when you're doing cobra or locus, using the opposite hand 
and the opposite leg at the same time is another useful way to access some of this cross crawl movement. Okay, so I hope that answers those questions. Oh, there was one other question that came in uh, this week regarding this movement, which was, if this stuff is so good for your brain, then shouldn't you do it all the time? <laughs> like how much of it is too much? And I would say that uh, the, the reason it could be too much is if when you're using, uh, when you're overusing the muscles, like particularly in prone or doing um, uh, locust pose where you're lifting up opposite legs like that can be too much after a while right so there's definitely time when it can when you can be overdoing it and then what's the minimum dose some of what some of the researchers are talking about now for minimum dose is 20 minutes a day they're, they're actually using this word dose to talk about um, to talk about how much yoga to do now and that's sorry it's noisy in here and that's particular for the uh, um, uh, dosage of uh, of yoga that they're they're talking about the word dose specifically because it's a scientific term that helps them to measure how, how much yoga you need to create certain uh, to affect certain changes either uh, behavioral changes um, cognitive changes emotional changes or uh, neuroplastic changes so that's why they're using that word dose now and the recommendations that seem to be coming out from some of the latest research is 20 minutes which I think is fascinating because the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in the 60s told everybody to do 20 minutes of meditation a day. I think it's kind of interesting. There's something the yogis kind of knew that this 20 minute was a minimal kind of dosage of yoga to start making um, lasting changes in the system. All right, so I'm gonna run away, <laughs> unless you have any questions. Thank you everybody for being here, by the way. Um, and feel free to leave questions here and I'm happy to answer them later. And also, if you're not in the Facebook group, the Subtle Yoga community, please request to join that group. We're happy to have you there. Um, so that's all for now. I'll see you next Friday. Namaste.